prisons. We think of them as a modern institution, a way of punishing those who break society's rules. But did you know our ancestors also had their versions of incarceration? From Rome to Persia, from England to ancient Maya, history is filled with examples of humanity's attempts to deter and punish crime. But these weren't prisons as we know them. Let's take a journey back in time to some of the most brutal and fascinating prisons in history. How did they treat their inmates? What weird and fearsome rituals did they perform? Buckle up because we're about to delve deep into humanity's past to uncover the dark underbelly of ancient societies. The heart of ancient Rome gives us our first destination, the dreaded Mamertine prison. This centuries-old edifice, steeped in tales of brutality, provides a gruesome glimpse into how the mighty Roman Empire dealt with its enemies. You see, the Romans were no strangers to discipline, order and, yes, punishment. One thing that stands out about the Mamertine prison is its structure, or rather, lack thereof. This wasn't a prison with bars, cells and guards, instead it was more like a dark, dank pit, hollowed out directly from the Earth's crust. It was located at the base of Capitoline Hill, primarily underground, and was more of a dungeon than a prison as we know it. It was said to have two gloomy, damp chambers, one atop the other. Prisoners were first placed in the upper chamber, known as the Tullianum. This chamber was around 12 feet high and 30 feet wide and deep, and could accommodate a considerable number of prisoners. However, the place was a far cry from comfort. It had a single opening at the top through which prisoners were lowered into the darkness using a rope or a chain. But the real horror was the lower chamber. At this was where prisoners who were sentenced to die were sent. In stark contrast to the Tullianum, this room was smaller, darker and suffocatingly close, known for its inhumane conditions. Historical records, some as old as 22 centuries, suggest that the Mamertine prison was often used to contain high-profile prisoners, enemies of the state. One notable inmate was said to be Saint Peter, one of the disciples of Jesus Christ, who was allegedly incarcerated here before his execution. But it was not just the physical torment that made the Mamertine prison infamous. The psychological terror of being in such a place, the oppressive darkness, the dreadful anticipation of passing and the agonizing wait for execution. These were perhaps even more tormenting than the actual physical conditions of the prison. Indeed, the Mamertine prison serves as a chilling reminder of Rome's darker side, a testament to the empire's harsh, often brutal system of justice. Let's travel further east to the ancient city of Xanthos, located in what is now modern-day Turkey but was then part of the Persian Empire. Here the prison was not a building or even a complex, but a singular macabre artifact, the wooden horse of Xanthos. This wooden contraption, known in ancient texts as the horse, was a chilling form of both punishment and imprisonment, showcasing the truly inventive if not horrific forms of incarceration in the ancient world. Designed with a hollow interior, the horse served as a grotesque echo of the famous Trojan horse. However, this was not a vessel of soldiers, but a container for pain and suffering. Prisoners were placed within the horse, their bodies contorted to fit the cramped interior. Once inside, they were at the mercy of the elements with the scorching sun during the day and freezing cold at night. But the horror of the wooden horse did not stop there. It was raised high above the ground meaning that once a prisoner was inside, escape was nearly impossible. The public humiliation, the physical discomfort, and the psychological torture of being trapped within this wooden monstrosity all contributed to making the horse a truly terrifying form of punishment. Moreover, the wooden horse was not used for long-term incarceration. Instead, it was an end-of-life sentence. Prisoners placed inside the horse rarely survived the ordeal as the grueling conditions led to exhaustion, dehydration, and eventually their untimely passing. The wooden horse of Xanthos serves as a chilling reminder of the inventive and brutal forms of punishment humanity can devise. Journeying a bit northwards, we find ourselves in the heart of London, England. It is here that one of the oldest and most notorious prisons of ancient Europe stood, the Bridewell Prison. Established in the 16th century, the Bridewell was initially intended as a palace for Henry V. However, its destiny was to become something far more sinister, transforming into a house of correction. A penitentiary for the city's beggars, vagrants and petty criminals. The building was impressive, boasting over 100 rooms and a grand courtyard, but the grandeur of the palace was a stark contrast to the harsh reality of life within its walls. 
Inside the Bridewell, prisoners endured a unique form of correction, one that focused on reformation over punishment. Inmates of Bridewell were made to work. Hard labor was seen as a tool of reformation, a method to correct their idle ways. The work was grueling. Women were often employed in beating hemp for making rope, while men were put to work on physically demanding tasks. All this under the stern and watchful eyes of the prison staff. Yet what truly made Bridewell infamous was the severity of its punishments. These were not just physical, but also public. Whipping, for instance, was a common form of punishment, typically administered at the whipping post for everyone to see. This served a dual purpose. It was a form of correction for the prisoners, but it also served as a deterrent for the onlookers, a chilling demonstration of what awaited those who stepped out of line. But life in Bridewell wasn't just about work and punishment. It also served as a refuge for the homeless and the destitute. Yes, it was a prison, but in a time when social services were virtually non-existent, it also provided shelter and a form of social security for those who had nowhere else to go. The Bridewell prison, despite its brutal reputation, provides an intriguing glimpse into the early evolution of the modern penal system. It was here that the concept of reformation through labor was first put into practice, a notion that for better or worse has been a mainstay of prisons around the world ever since. But let's not forget the Americas. Shifting our gaze across the Atlantic, we find ourselves in the heart of the ancient Mayan civilization, renowned for their advanced mathematics calendar systems and, of course, their brutal penal codes. Notably, we have the infamous prison of Kitala, a true testament to the harsh and fearsome world of Mayan justice. Kitala wasn't just a prison, it was an arena of punishment designed to inflict maximum suffering and disgrace. The very architecture of the prison was designed to reflect this. Deep pits, known as chultuns, were carved directly into the limestone bedrock, creating vertical prison cells from which there was no escape. But what makes Kitala so chilling is not just its physical form, but also its psychological and spiritual dimensions. The Mayans held a deep respect for the earth, and believed that being buried alive was one of the worst punishments imaginable. In this light, the chultuns of Kitala represented not just a physical incarceration, but a spiritual defilement. Conditions in Kitala were harsh, even by ancient standards. Prisoners were subjected to physical and psychological torture. They were deprived of food and water, left to endure the sweltering heat, and tormented by the knowledge of their impending doom. There's also a grim irony to Kitala's purpose. The Mayans used chultuns as a method of water storage during the dry season, essential for their survival. Yet, these same life-giving structures were also used as a tool of torment, a stark reminder of the dual nature of human innovation. The chilling echo of Kitala still resonates today. It's a stark reminder of the brutality of the ancient world. And here's something you might not have expected. Ancient Egypt, a civilization that has fascinated us for millennia, has left behind traces of an infamous detention system in Elephantine Island. This is a place where prisoners were not just physically confined, but also psychologically tortured. Elephantine Island, located in the Nile, was the site of a unique prison system in ancient Egypt. Its isolation made it an ideal place for incarceration. Prisoners were ferried to the island and left there, isolated from society and surrounded by the unforgiving Nile. But the imprisonment didn't just involve physical isolation. Ancient Egyptian society was deeply spiritual with a profound belief in the afterlife. They believed that in order to reach the afterlife, a person's body had to be preserved, and so mummification was common practice. Here comes the chilling part. To instill fear and punishment, it's said that the prison guards on Elephantine Island would threaten to throw the bodies of dead prisoners into the Nile. The idea of their bodies being lost and destroyed, denying them access to the afterlife, was a terrifying prospect for these ancient people making their imprisonment not just a physical, but a deeply spiritual punishment. Records of Elephantine Island also suggest harsh living conditions. The prisoners were put to hard labor, forced to quarry stone and load boats under the scorching Egyptian sun. Food and water were scarce, and the hot, dry air made life incredibly difficult. So there we have it, a journey into the brutal realities of ancient incarceration. From the suffocating Mamatine prison to the psychologically terrifying Elephantine Island prison, 
We've seen how prisons were not just physical institutions, but psychological ones as well. These harrowing tales of punishment and survival give us a fresh perspective on the societies that we so often romanticize. As much as we marvel at the architectural splendors of Rome, the scientific wonders of Persia, the cultural richness of England and the spiritual depth of the Maya and Egyptians, we should remember that these civilizations like ours had a darker side. Thanks for joining me on this journey. And remember, the annals of history hold many more such intriguing and sometimes terrifying stories. And as always, thanks for watching.